So I guess uh, this is a general audience talk, so I should somehow introduce algebraic geometry very quickly. Um, <laughs> it's a field. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, so one of the most important sort of geometric things today is the projective space. You can do this over every field. Um, can I do it like this? Except I'm going to drop the subscript soon. And this is just the space of all lines uh, through the origin. In this uh, k plus sorry n plus one dimensional vector space over n, sorry over k and okay that's a projective space and then for today a variety over k is this well just a subset of this projective space but not just any subset but you know it has to be defined by polynomial equations. And by define, I mean it's like the solution set to some polynomial equation. And of course, not all varieties are as you know as nice as everything. So for us today, the important sort of ni niceness condition is smoothness. Uh, so, to give an example of a variety that would be smooth, is something like an elliptic curve, for example. Uh, maybe this doesn't make so much sense, but okay, what is then not smooth? This is more enlightening. Um, so, in, in non smooth things, something weird happens. So, here you have a self intersection. This is not a smooth point, and it's not smooth, not so nice. Also, you could have something like king there, also not smooth, not very nice. And yeah, unfortunately, we cannot use smooth things today. Uh, this is why I have quasi smooth in the title. And what, what does quasi smooth mean? Well, I'm not going to get so much into it. But it is uh, well behaved. Weakening of being smooth. So we will well behave in, some, in, in the sense that they have uh, nicer categorical properties than a smooth things. For uh, example, which one? Uh, what is an example? Yes, among those, which one are quasi smooth? Well, actually, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The quasi smooth basically just means that, uh, well, a classical example is anything that's LCI, locally complete intersection. Uh, but yeah. I mean, I don't want to draw a picture of non LCI variety because I can't draw a picture like that. <laughs> anyway, so. Okay, so I, I, I say, say like, okay, classification of the coporism. So what do I mean? Uh, so let me define this sort of pre coborism ring of varieties or coborism ring for now. And that's a really nice geometric description. So you start with this free abelian group generated by equivalence classes of quasi smooth varieties. And then you model by the coborism relation. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, not surprising. So uh, equivalence class is just the isomorphism. What is the isomorphism? Up to sort of quasi isomorphism. So it's up to homotopy inverses, basically. No, no. homotopy. So let's not get into that particular technical point. <laughs> I can talk about that later. Uh, yeah, these are not schemes, they are the right schemes, and they form an infinity category. So it's, it's isomorphic in the infinity categorical sense. <laughs> uh, 
And okay, I also have to explain this cobordism thing. If you have studied topology, this looks a bit familiar, but also a bit weird. So what we have is that okay, we have big variety W, also quasi smooth. It maps to P1. And in P1, you have, well, at least two points. Let's call them zero and infinity. So I guess everyone has seen the Riemann sphere. This is the P1 over the complex numbers. And then, you know, zero is just the origin. Infinity is the point of infinity. And with W zero, this is the part of W that maps to zero. And then the part that maps to infinity, actually, we also have a decomposition for that into A and B. The union of A and B. Maybe you need to assume something, not so much. But every time you have a picture like this, you have an algebraic cobordism relation, which is saying that W, the class of W, is the class of A plus the class of B, with the same as far, doesn't really work this nicely. You have to remove something, which I'm not going to explain very much. So you take the intersection, you do some geometric construction that sort of fixes dimensions, and then you remove that one. And this kind of relation is expected to hold here. And by definition, these are all the relations in the ring. The W to the projective line is polar. Hmm? The W to the projective line is polar. Yes. So W is projective because here <laughs> everything is like projective. And A and B, they are irreducible components. What is A and B? Uh, they, they don't have to be irreducible components. Anyway, you can be, I mean, you could take A is empty. Anyway, you can express it as a sum of two Cartier divisors. Sort of. You can do this decomposition, and for any decomposition, okay, okay. you get the relation like this. <laughs> okay. So A and B are Cartier divisor in W. Sort of, yeah. Uh, like a derived version, a virtual Cartier divisor, <laughs> which is basically just a data line bundle and then a global section. In the intersection, I might think of it in terms of it to the various to no assumption ah. because you can always take the derived intersection. Oh, it's the half intersection. Yeah, everything is derived. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. And okay, so this is sort of nice geometric. So I have only one comfort, only one divider. Instead of two, you load. Yep. So what will be the relation? So instead of like say B is empty? Yes, let's say that. Well then uh, these both are at zero, they don't exist. Yeah. So then it's just W is equal to A. Ah. So it's just very ah. sort of naive okay, okay. cobordism relation. Okay. So this is somehow like uh, you combine two kinds of relation. You have this cobordism relation and then some sort of decomposition. So two elliptic curve will be cobord. Yes. And so, so the theorem I want to start with today is that we can actually compute this if we take rational coefficients. It would be nicer if we didn't have to take that, but yeah. So I mean, first of all, this thing, this thing is a ring. So the summation corresponds to taking these joint unions, the product the corresponds to taking cart like uh, Cartesian products, basically. And there exists an isomorphism of rings. Uh, sorry. So you take this, and so with the rationals, I mean, what this means is basically you start with the free Q vector space generated by this and modeled by the Q vector space of relations. And then this is isomorphic to an infinite polynomial algebra generated where the sort of variables that generate it correspond to projective spaces. And okay, the, is this thing graded by dimension? Yes. And 
about the proof. I guess I'm not supposed to tell, talk about the proof, but I don't know the proof, sort of. I prove <laughs> something else, and then this follows by magic. And this is the polynomial with no relations. Yes. And in fact, I mean, this, just a quick remark for algebraic geometers, this is even more general, you don't have to work over a field, you can work over a Noetherian scheme of finite crawl dimension, uh, that admits an ample line bundle, then you just replace Q here with a theory or with rational coefficients, with rational coefficients. Okay. So this is the theorem I start with here, okay? I also should talk about some open problems, I guess that's what the thing said. And there's an obvious one, like, this is not small. We have to tensor the Q. So, what about <coughs> this thing in the code? Um, as I said, open question. Oh, I have only have partial answers. And the first thing is that this actually doesn't seem to be the right thing to consider. So this, we have to add some more relations to get the cobordism ring. This I sort of call the pre cobordism ring. Two. Characteristic is zero. Can yeah, compute this. But my result, this is uh, Levin Morel. Uh, So then there's another very explicit description, not quite as explicit as here, but for the topologists, it's, it basically agrees with the complex cobordism ring of a point. Very similar generators. And we have time, yeah. Um, okay, so, so that's the partial progress I do this in like a non-zero characteristic is, Characteristic of k is p greater than zero. Then everything, every quasi smooth sort of variety is coordinate to a regular variety, meaning like a smooth variety, basically. Then, I mean, after you invert the in the coefficients. Again, it's not so nice, but if you don't invert anything, then it, I don't know. I can't do anything. Okay, regular varieties. In fact, in a couple of weeks, I will sort of give a talk at the Princeton University where I expand on this problem in the hopes of finding someone who knows algebraic geometry to help me maybe classify all these things. Um, am I out of time? Seems so. You have a minute. A minute. Damn, I should have think of like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I have a minute, yeah. Too <laughs> <laughs> so much pressure. Well, I guess people can just uh, ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you wrote this omega star one by P, not omega bar star, I mean omega underlying star. Mm -hmm. So you are changing. Yeah. It's a new definition. Yeah. It's, so what is omega star from there? Is oh, it easy to define? This one? Yes. Uh, it's, you need to set up some notation. Basically, I mean, 
here you have sort of a decomposition with a like thing but you can decompose this kind of thing that's some of two Cartier divisors into this kind of class. You have to do something different more generally. That's basically what this extra relation is saying. But yeah, it's not very easy to like explain. I see in uh, easy to describe, of course, but it's like possibly diagnostic. Uh, yeah, so it's basically you can just take like giant classes of the tangent bundle. Oh, you have to define a tangent bundle. So. Yeah, where everything quasi smooth has a tangent <laughs> complex. <laughs> yeah, it's like a perfect of for amplitude one. So then you can take churn classes and then you can get numbers out and basically all the possible numbers you can get out completely determine the mm -hmm. rational cobordism class. Mm -hmm. So just like for this smooth quadrium theory. Hmm. Yeah. And what's the value between regular and smooth or gas is smooth? Uh, regular is regular, smooth is smooth. <laughs> 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 they, they are different. Uh, yes. So regular is regular in the sense of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, and quasi smooth just means that, <laughs> yeah, it's. Basically, it means that locally it embeds to a smooth thing as a sort of derived regular embedding, meaning that locally it's the derived vanishing locus of a right number of equations. A smooth is what it usually is. When the characteristic is zero, you go, let's say it's C, you see there's some comparison to topological. Yes. Even, even though these things are not smooth. And characteristic zero? Yeah. Uh, well, Levin and Morel give a different construction where everything is smooth. So then it's easy. And then Levy and Shurk extend it to the right sort of thing and show that they are actually equivalent. So in part three is the assertion that. Am I not allowed to replace regular with smooth, or is that just not known? Uh, not known for non perfect fields. Yeah, that's. I mean, I guess maybe it could be done if I worked harder, but I didn't. So it's not hard. <laughs> so you don't assume your field to be perfect? No, but you invert B, so because if you, you know can... what happens by, by inseparable field extension when things in M to C. Would that remain the same? Mm. I don't think I I mean I cannot say, say that they are isomorphic. But of course, if you pull back and then push forward, it's just multiplication by the degree, which is a p power. And this is invertible, so you have a change on it. So that's how you can sort of reduce to that. So in such sense, even before the main case is algebraic low speed, if you care on your Yep. All right, I think we're almost out of time, so let's thank Tony. <laughs>